Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Coffee Breaks with Steve. And wow, I actually hit the button correctly this week and got us going live like it's supposed to. I actually remember to turn on lights, cameras working, everything seems to be working. If you tuned in last week, you may recall that I thought I was live for about the first minute and <laughs> realized when uh, moderator Kat started texting me madly that I'd never actually completely hit the live button. Anyway, welcome. Uh, welcome to Coffee Breaks with Steve on uh, this Saturday. And uh, if you are just now tuning in, I see Aubrey's on there. Good morning, Aubrey. If you're just now tuning in, make sure you say hello and uh, let us know that you're here. But before we go any further, as you know, this is the 100th episode. And I want to introduce and add uh, to the program our guest co-host for the day, Rick Venturi. Hey, Rick. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. I see. Okay, Scott's on there. Jay's on there. Jerry Thompson's on there. You got people joining in, people who have decided they're going to be with us for this 100th episode celebration. I'll tell you something, though, Rick. I am thrilled to have you here this morning. Welcome. And I, I really think, I mean, this was, it really was a random drawing, but I really think that there is a certain amount of rightness to this because I'm pretty sure you and Carla have been watching every single episode since episode <laughs> one of Coffee Breaks with Steve. I mean, you're here every single week, just about, right? Right. I mean, what else are we going to do on a Saturday morning? We're retired and living in the middle of the forest, right? You do live in the middle of the forest. That's I mean, true. It's, um, you, and you have yet to come visit us. I, I know. I need to do that. I really need to do that because all the pictures always look so lovely out there. And I, I'd love to spend some time with you and Carla and the, the dogs and the deer and the bears and everything else that lives up there with you. <laughs> Just take a walk in the forest with me. Hey, man, that's great. Well, I see everybody else. Shalane's on here. Hello. Ha happy 100th. Last week, Shalane, you wished me a happy 65th. So I guess wishing me a happy 100th this week is the proper jump. Um, yes. Yes. Congratulations, well, Steve. I wanted to tell you, uh, I think it's rather amazing that you've done this for 100 episodes and it's brought us a lot of fun and information over this last uh, year and a half. So uh, congratulations to you, sir. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I very, very first started this, it was supposed to be a, a work related. It was I was doing that consulting work and this was a way to reach clients. And, and, and then it had already converted to being more of this just personal with friends time before the the uh, pandemic put us all in lockdown, but it just has really been so fun for me over this last year plus, specifically when it's been so difficult to get out and see people. I look forward to this on Saturday mornings. It's like being able to have that regular group of people that all get around the coffee table and you know you just chat about what's going on. So, yeah, so do we. So yeah, we. well, thank you. Well, I want to just say, let's see, who else has signed on here? I've been kind of staring at the screen, but I see Amy's on here. Rod is on here. Um, Carla. Carla. Carla's here. And um, yeah, Kathy Garlic. And if I haven't already said hi to you or Rick hasn't said hi to you, we're actually clients and Steve has been playing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's Christopher. Whenever you see that MQ at the end of a comment from Coffee Breaks with Steve, that's uh, Christopher, our producer. All right. Yeah, well, we thanks, do have, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, Rick, we do have some special days that we're acknowledging this week that uh, yeah, pop I noticed. up on the calendar. And today is a big one. Um, if you're into peanut butter cookies, because this is <laughs> National <laughs> Peanut Butter Cookie Day. And it happens to be my is happens to be my favorite cookie. Yes, is, is it true. really? Yeah, it is. So you need to figure out a way to get some uh, some of those good peanut butter cookies in your system today. I may just make some tonight. <laughs> that'd, that'd be good. That'd be the way to go. And you know what I always say about these special days is like it's great to have a special day, but sometimes they just remind us that we can be enjoying this or acknowledging this all year, right? So right, right absolutely. On. And this one, I thought about you a little bit, too. Tomorrow is National Weed Your Garden Day. And I know that <laughs> you and, and Carla do have – do you have a, an active garden this year? Yes, we do. Carla's been uh, working on uh, uh, putting in a lot of flowers, actually, this year to make our, our uh, fence line look a lot better than, than just the weeds growing up there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's looking a lot better. But I would like to say that this, of course, is my least favorite thing about doing the garden is weeding. <laughs> 
getting down on your hands and knees or using the old hoe. I'm on, I'm glad it's only one day a year. Yeah, right. That is, isn't that <laughs> great that, that you just have to weed the garden that one day and then you're good for another 364. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Oh, my gosh. That's that's the reality of it all. Um, and then uh, and I'm going to pop a banner here because I know that. Uh, and I'll pick that one. OK, um, Carissa is our director and it's typically her job to run the banners right now. She has her daughter, our granddaughter in a dance class that takes place right during this time. And the pictures and videos have been so cute. I've seen little Carson out there and her little leotard doing different types of dance and stuff. But uh, so I'm kind of trying to back up. Carissa keeps saying I'm going to try to join when I'm, you know, at the dance studio and I'll come on by phone. And I know she's trying this morning, but it doesn't always work. So I just have to be prepared to back up. Anyway, Weed Your Garden. Okay, Monday is Flag Day. And I remember when I was growing up, Rick, I don't remember... I, I mean, it, maybe this changed over time. It's almost like we don't really even acknowledge Flag Day. Used to, we used to see people flying the American flag Flags. all over mm -hmm. the place, right? That was a big day to do that. And I'm sure that it still happens. Like, if I drive around Pleasanton on Monday, I'll probably see flags up around that the city puts up or something. But um, I, I think there know. was, I, I think ahead. there were more flags displayed when they, when people used to have to pledge allegiance in school mm -hmm. to the flag. And so there was more issue about yeah, keeping the flag in the forefront. And people, so, I think it was more front of mind, right? Right. So yeah. Old people, the ones who tend to put the flags out now. Yeah. Because <laughs> they remember the Pledge of Allegiance. That's correct. And and um, it's interesting because when we were living, now we're living in a, a basically a, a condo. It's, it's an apartment. And I could technically still put up a a flag holder outside. I still got the flagpole and, and various flags. But when we were living in our house in Pleasanton, we had, of course, our American flag that I would always try to remember to put out on the special days that acknowledge the flag. But Carol also had, uh, and we still have in storage, like a flag for every season, for every holiday, you know. So we always had a flag. There was always a flag up outside. So that was also a reminder. You'd walk outside, you'd see a flag waving in your face, you go, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to put up the flag today. <laughs> but that actually um, was first, it was the reason that we celebrated on June 14th. And I was kind of researching this, and I probably knew this at one point, was that it was on June 14th, 1777, that the Second, second Continental Congress formally approved the design of the flag at that point. And, uh, but it wasn't really a nationally recognized day until 1916 and Woodrow Wilson uh, proclaimed it Flag Day. And I believe that was probably still during World War I. So again, there was probably a focus on some level of patriotism that went with that. Here's Here are a couple of other days coming up this week, Rick, that made me think of you. It's not necessarily <laughs> why, why I put them in here, but uh, June 16th is Fresh Veggies Day. Much no, better than frozen vegetables. Yes. Or canned vegetables. Oh, day. That's yeah. just that's the worst. That's <laughs> not necessarily a good thing. Which, but, by the way, I thought was what vegetables look like until I was about 12 years old, is that they, they were in a can, not the way we would eat them. Right. Most of us probably we have fresh pork chops, that. fresh pork chops, but canned beans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, I grew up, though, even with that, well, we did have, I think we must have at different times, well, let me back up here. At home, we probably had a lot more canned veggies, but when we'd go visit my grandma Glavin, ah. grandma had a full vegetable garden in her backyard. I mean, her entire, I think she was still tending that garden until she had to move away from that house. But she grew just about all of her vegetables fresh in that garden. I mean, if she was, we were there and she was going to make dinner, it's like, well, let's go out and pick the vegetables for tonight. You know, she had all <laughs> kinds of stuff in that garden. And I just grew up and this goes to the next day, which is June 17th. I love the fact that June 16th is, hi, Kathy Glavin. Sorry, I was reading here and I ignored that Kathy Glavin was on and oh, she, Kathy. Now she's hi, Kathy. yelling at me. Um, <laughs> And which she does, she went and she said, so yeah, it's good that you said, because she said uh, hi to you too. And she was going to start yelling at both of us if we uh, <laughs> don't respond. But uh, 
it's that's a skill to watch the comments and and pay attention to what's it going is. on. It is. It Good is. For you. And, and the way that uh, the way that this the studio platform StreamYard is set up, it's like it would be great if you could split the screen and just look at them all in one place. I actually have them on two different monitors. You know, I'm working <laughs> in two different places. This is that's why sometimes, like last week, I think I've turned things on and I'm looking someplace else and I haven't. So the 16th is Fresh Veggies Day. The 17th is Eat Your Vegetables Day. And I just grew up. I I don't recall there being really a time. There probably was when there were any vegetables that I didn't like to eat. I just mm. always liked vegetables for the most part. There maybe were a couple as a kid that weren't my favorites. But one of the things was we were told if it's on the plate, put in front of you, you eat it and mm. you'll enjoy it. You know, and with my mom... <laughs> You went with that. You didn't argue if mom said you will eat it and you'll like it. And there wasn't going to be much further discussion. But I I like vegetables. So I'm glad good to for know. you. Yes. <laughs> uh, eat your vegetables day is, is a good thing. So did well, I see my, it? Go my ahead. Mom, my mom used to say, I would say, what's this? And she'd said, what are you talking about? That's your favorite food. You love this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, right. And by the way, I think to have a eat your vegetables day is is kind of like it should be eat your vegetable. It should be don't eat your vegetables day. So the rest 364 days it would be eat your vegetables day. And again, see, there's another example of do we really need one day to, to do something that we should be doing all the time? Right. It, it could say uh, eat your vegetables every day day. Every day day. That could a be reminder good. that this is yeah. what you should be doing. It's kind of like having an Earth Day when we think about, you know, the environment and recycling and that kind of stuff. Can we just I, maybe we need the prompts to keep us focused? I don't know. But uh, I uh, that, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that's the point. I think. I think it is. It's th to keep us aimed in the right direction. I just saw that Amy Sterling is on here, and Amy, Hi, Amy. has a birthday. In a couple of days, right, Amy? You, your birthday is June 14th. So happy birthday, Amy. Uh, good to be able happy to wish birthday. you that. Happy birthday, and we'll drink to you. And uh, Scott Larry. Scott, um, I don't know if Scott is on here. Sometimes, you know, it's interesting because there are some times, it's weird on this Facebook live thing. Sometimes I don't see the names. I'll even see other people say hi to people that they're like, are they here? Um, very quickly, Scott Leary, I know has watched some episodes of Coffee Breaks with Steve, but Scott reconnected with us, starting with my sister, Kathy, three, three or so months ago. And Scott is one of those people that you just kind of go, oh my gosh, you know, talk about a blast from the past. We knew Scott and his family when we lived in Wishram, Washington, from where we moved when I was five, wow. when we moved to Portland. And, but I still remember we were close friends with the Larrys with, with, and we kept in touch with the family over the years after that, but definitely, you know, we were playing with Scott Larry again, and we would see his parents occasionally and probably ran into him a handful of times as young adults, but he found uh, Kathy online, remembered dad, remembered Frank, and then reached out to me and has actually been connecting through Facebook on a regular basis. Scott's got a birthday on the 18th. So Scott, if you're watching or if you tune in later, um, happy birthday. And uh, you're a Scott, that's true. Uh, and thank you for, for being the proxy on that, uh, Scott Lovin. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for that, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Shalane, Shalane, our kids, we've actually taken them to Wish Ram uh, a handful of times when they were growing up so they could see where dad lived as a child and and now they understand a little bit about my psyche. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, hey, I'll tell you something though, Rick, you know, it's interesting when we do think about our childhood and that kind of takes us into the topic today, by the way, let me just say, if you have a special day this week that we didn't mention, uh, throw it in the chat so we can acknowledge you. If you have a special day coming up in the month of June or even looking ahead to July, you can message me to make sure that we have a note of that and can add it to our special days in the appropriate week. But I kind of wanted to transition um, to our topic today because we, we wanted to talk about the movies that we grew up with that influenced us in some way. And, you know, you and I grew up where there was not as much on television 
Oh, yeah. And if we, you know, when we were introduced to movies, it was always, I mean, it was a big deal if we were planning, if my parents were planning on taking us to go see a movie, especially in the, the actual theater where you sit down in the seats with your bag of popcorn and stuff, that was a big deal. We got ready for those days or evenings. And it was just as often, especially when I was younger, that if we were going to go see a movie, we'd go to the drive-in. And uh, mom and dad yeah. would, you know, set it up to where we could fall asleep in the back of the car and that kind of stuff. But a lot of them back in those days that I recall, the ones that mostly stick with me, um, were the were the Disney Disney movies were prevalent mm -hmm. back then, right? If you were going to go see a movie as a kid, a family movie particularly, what were the movies that you recall growing up with? child or even later, you know, teen years or whatever that really influenced you in some way, Rick? Well, as you were saying, uh, going to the movies back then, the movie would come out and it would be in the theater for seven days. So you had seven days to see a movie and then it was, it was basically, for most movies, unless it was gone with the wind or something, it was gone. And yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be on TV for years. Right. So if you missed a movie, you were out of luck, right? Uh, yeah, I Disney movies when I was a kid, when they take us to the drive-in uh, and we'd fall asleep in the back. I remember that there were the movies like, you know, uh, Sleeping Beauty and uh, Cinderella. Mm -hmm. But for me, the, mo the if you talk about going to the movie early, one of the first movie memories I remember is my mother dropping my sister and I off at a Saturday matinee. And my sister was four and a half years older than me. So it was like, take care of your brother because I was only five. And the movie was The Thing. You remember oh The my. Thing, the original The Thing? Yeah. And I remember looking at my sister and she would hold her ears whenever the scary part came because she said, it scares me to hear the people scream. Screaming. Yeah, I'd cover my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming's okay. I didn't, I didn't want to have to look at. I didn't want to have to look at what was going on. And for years afterwards, I wouldn't get out of bed when the lights were off because I was right. sure that The Thing was underneath my bed and would grab my ankle. Oh my so I'd gosh. have to wait till the light was on before I could get him to go to the bathroom. So I see some people already putting uh, first movies, and I'd love to see some things on there in the chat. Maybe the first movie you remember seeing as a oh. kid. What about the scariest movie? Rick was just talking about The Thing. Maybe the scariest movie you saw, uh, the one, and we'll get to some other things that you can share with us in a minute, but you're talking about scary movies. The, the first real scary movie that I remember seeing all the way through we were visiting my grandparents in Sweet Home, Oregon, and my Aunt Mary Kay would take, sometimes take one or the other of us to the movies or maybe both. And it seemed like invariably I'd end up getting bored. I was pretty young, get bored. And during the break, or she'd have to walk out during the movie and call grandpa to come and pick me up and take me. I don't know why she kept taking me. The first one, I think she finally said, if I'm taking you, you're sitting through the movie. The first movie that I remember sitting all the way through with her was Village of the Damned. Oh. And, you know, there are these little weird kids whose eyes would go weird and, and they would force people to do things that, you know, were destructive. And I had I, I, it's kind of the same thing. I was always afraid that the closet door in the bedroom was going to open in the dark <laughs> and I'd see those eyes. I had nightmares about that movie for a long time. Village of the Damned. That's a good thing to take a little kid to, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But there were others. I've seen others that, you know what's funny now, because I go back and watch it, and this is much later, but when I went and saw Jaws in the theater in the mid-70s with a girlfriend at the time, and driving home after that movie, it was almost like you kept expecting in the headlights for the shark to come jumping out in the middle of the road <laughs> or something. And now I watch that movie, and it's, of course, part of it is the shock factor is gone. But now... You know, the effects with the shark seem so lame compared to some of the effects that we get. That I go, I was really scared by that. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't um, go in the water for a while after seeing that's that. That's true. And a lot of us were <laughs> felt that way. Uh, were there other ones that you saw? You mentioned the thing. Were there other ones that you remember seeing that really scared you or, or upset you or anything like that? I know my wife says that w the one that got to her most, and I think probably as a teenager, was The Exorcist. And to me, there was part of the fear factor there. Part of it was just that it was just disturbing and, you know, gross, gross at times. Right? <laughs> yeah, I can see that be disturbing for sure. 
Uh, yeah. You know, there was a movie that uh, I, a few years later, after I started getting over the thing, my mother dropped us off and we saw Creature from a Black Lagoon. So it was now was the Creature from the Black oh, Lagoon was yeah. under my bed for the next. Yes, years. that one was that one was as a kid was. Well, you know, there were a lot of uh, what was his name? Castle did a lot of the um, the almost that was that film noir, black and white, scary movie effect for many, many years you had. Cause I think the original creature from the black lagoon was in black and white. Maybe it was in yes. color. No, it was in black and white. I, it's sometimes Absolutely. it's hard for me to remember because we had a black and white TV. So when I saw <laughs> these on TV the first time uh, and they would have those Friday night, there was always every city, I think, and had a TV station that did the Friday night, some kind of horror Fright movie, night or Fright yeah. night thing. Right. But, um, I remember, yeah, you know, the original, I mean, seeing Bela Lugosi as Dracula, seeing uh, Boris Karloff as Frankenstein, I mean, those still are classics. There was another one, my sister Kathy will remember this, that was creepy, weird, scary, and part of it was the music. We, She and I have talked about this since, and it was called The Night, Kathy, you're on here, so fill this in if I'm getting the name not quite right, The Night Walker. And it was Barbara Stanwyck and um, I'm trying to remember, I can picture the actor. I can't think of his name right now. Kathy's going to fill in the blanks here. Oh, Scott, uh, my brother's mentioning the trilogy of terror, which I think was a made for TV movie, but there were some that were made for, I mean, you can, I can even go back and watch some of the twilight zone episodes now and go, Oh man. Yeah. I remember that one getting to me. Uh, night Stalker. Was it Night Stalker or was it Night Walker, Kathy? Because there was a Night Stalker TV show, but for, was it I'm just, for some reason, Night Walker is in my mind, but you may be right, Night Stalker. But that one had this real creepy music, and we found the music online since, and you know, it's like share it <laughs> over a chat and go, oh, yeah, man, that still creeps me out. <laughs> what, um, what are the movies that you saw as a kid that if you see that they're coming on TV, you'll still go back and switch to that channel? Like I think of The Wizard of Oz. That one, yeah, I never, works. I didn't see her. I mean, it, you know, it came out in the theater well before, I was born, and and actually, well before you were born too, Rick. You're you're older than I am, but <laughs> it was but not that much older. It was but <laughs> I remember when they were sh would show the Wizard of Oz on TV, and it was an annual event, and it was truly an event for many years. It was like there was a whole evening almost built around seeing the Wizard of Oz on TV, and usually, I remember different times when either Danny Kaye or I think Dick Van Dyke maybe at one point sort of did an introduction. They would actually have a thing because I remember even Danny Kay saying just before they go said, oh, by the way, in a minute, this lion is gonna roar, but don't worry, don't worry about it. You know, it was almost like they're prepping the kids for that MGM lion and, but the Wizard of Oz, man, sometimes we would get together with cousins to watch it, you know, but it was always, and to this day, I will still click, Wizard of Oz is on click over and watch at least a segment of it. I mean, that's like, Reliving the childhood for sure. Yeah. Do you have any like that? Well, uh, the one that comes to mind for me is actually uh, I was a little bit older as a uh, eighteen year old, and it was Wait Until Dark with Audrey Hepburn. Yes. You remember that one? Oh my gosh! What an exciting movie, and that that did something for me to make me understand that people with disabilities can do a lot for themselves. You know, there was a blind woman uh, yeah. defending herself. And I realized, you know, just because you're blind doesn't mean you can't actually do the part to take care of yourself. And of course, I ended up working with people with disabilities my whole career. Yes, and that did. was the big ad attitude about that is let people do what they can do. I, I And you know what? I agree with that 100 percent, you know, that I also worked for a period of time for an organization that was focused on people with disabilities and families affected by disability. And I already had a sense of that. And you're right. That movie was a huge one. That was in many ways, I think, a paradigm breaker, because I don't know that there had been much done before that in cinema. You think about the fact that this mm -hmm. was a woman who was blind and the fact that it was a woman. Right. Right. And right. It being and this movie being done during an era when maybe neither of of those identifiers were really recognized as having power and empowerment. And that was a big deal one. You're right. It's a good one. Are, yeah. What are some of the other ones uh, on the chat here? People, if you want to put the movies that that you would still go back. I need to now I need to go watch Wait Until Dark. I'm going to have to find that. <laughs> I haven't seen that one in a few years. 
Um, it was on. It was on cable just not too long ago. Was which it? Is what reminded I, me of it? Yeah, I, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I mean, I, anything with Audrey Hepburn in it is still. You know, it's like talk about a childhood crush. She was, <laughs> Audrey Hepburn was just a such a beauty that it's like okay, I'm going to watch this just because Audrey Hepburn. I think even as a kid before I knew you were supposed to have a crush on on actresses, Audrey Hepburn, the, those eyes and that voice just amazing. And an um, excellent actress. And an excellent, excellent actress, actress, too. That was the other Wait until Dark played. proved that. It definitely <laughs> proved that. Yeah. It was a good cast. I mean, that was just a, an yeah. all-around good cast. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I like that. And I like even thinking about the movies that sort of change our perspective on life. And, and you don't even necessarily, you were mentioning that connection between seeing Wait Until Dark and then um, the, the career that you went into working with people with disabilities. And I mean, you can say, well, was it because of that movie? No, but we sometimes don't think about the subliminal impact. Sometimes we think about the conscious impact. I, I did this thing or I saw this thing and I it made me decide to go a certain direction. But we don't always think about the things that may have had a more background influence Mm -hmm. on choices and attitudes and that kind of stuff. And, the, and cinema can definitely do that, right? Movies can definitely do that. Um, yeah. Definitely. Well, listen, definitely. we've got a few minutes left here, and I still want to see the uh, comments on movies in here, but when you and I were preparing for the show today, you posed a question that I thought would be interesting to spend just a couple of minutes discussing. This is the 100th episode yeah. of Coffee Breaks with Steve. And you tossed out a question you know, when we were exchanging our comments. Since it's the 100th episode, which was your favorite or most memorable, ep memorable episode or topic over the last 100? So before I answer from my perspective, it's tougher for me because, you know, I kind of get ingrained <laughs> in all of them. Is there, are there any that stand out for you? I mean, there have been 100 of them. I don't, you know, I, but does anything stand out for you besides today, obviously, Rick? Yeah, yeah. Today's a special one, and and it just not because just because I'm here, but because it's your hundredth episode, and that's such an awesome milestone to reach. You know, such a benchmark. But for me, uh, I could say one episode and uh, episodes like it where people are asked to engage in specific questions. So yeah. I remember never ever. You know, I've never, ever. And yeah, something with a little bit of humor to it's also fun. Yeah. So that probably my favorite. But any one where people actually, today's one, for instance, where people respond uh, with memories and you get to memories. share that with people. That's the favorite time I have on on uh, Coffee Breaks with Steve. But that's they're all good. good. They're all informative and fun. They're, they're, it's fun to do them. And it's not just because it's often me just talking nonstop for 30 minutes, but because I do like to... Uh, um, Co never have I ever co-hosted an episode. That was Christopher. But Christopher, you have been a, a guest on here. In fact, one of the memorable ones was one about a year and a half ago, and it kind of changed the way that we approached the production approach because uh, I, it, I almost quit at that point. I almost said, I'm not doing this anymore. It was a holiday season episode, and Christopher was on. Christopher was, and his family were visiting for the holidays, and Christopher was a guest host live, and we were talking about things having to do with like computer security because that's a field that he's involved in, and we lost the feed, and that had happened briefly a few times back in the day because of the internet connection, but it just crashed right in the middle of the show, like we weren't able to recover. And I was so frustrated and disappointed at that point that I said, I, you know what, I, I don't know if that it's worth it to do this. Well, while I was I was at work, this was before pan, shortly before pandemic, a few months before pandemic. And while I was at work, Carol and Christopher and my son-in-law, Dustin, Dustin and Shalane were also in town for the holidays, on their own went out, got the supplies to do it. And Christopher and Dustin spent hours rigging up um, the Ethernet connections that would allow me to get a stronger connection in-house yeah. on my, and they said, cool. you, you really need to keep doing this. You enjoy it. People who tune in enjoy it. And uh, so that it's memorable for me uh, for that reason. I think the other thing for me, the reason that it's difficult for me to maybe pick an episode is the very thing that you mentioned, Rick, and that's when people interact and because people interact. Um, that it, I've said this on the air and I say it again, I'll say it again today. For me, this is much less about 
me talking as it is about finding ways to engage people. That's why I'm always trying to think ahead and I'm very appreciative of the fact that other people around me, including Christopher and, and Carissa and Shalan, who are who have agreed to be my production team. It's like, you know, I, yeah, they're my kids. And so they, I can kind of arm twist them into it, but they've, they've agreed to do it. That they feed me ideas as well. And I've gotten ideas from other people. In fact, the topic today was something that my son-in-law, Dustin, pitched several weeks ago, said, you know, it would be a great topic and might be a great one for your 100th episode would be talking about movies that influenced us as kids. It's like, that's a great idea, Dustin. So <laughs> I tossed this out. I've said it before, and I'll toss it out again today. I think the 100th episode is a good time to do that, is to the people who do tune in. What, what are some topics that maybe from the past that you'd like to revisit? What are some topics that you think of that would be fun to talk about? And as Rick said, I do like to keep it, if not always humorous, at least more or less up. Yeah, we've had some heavier topics too. A few weeks ago when we had Jay and Jerry Zetterval on here and talked about growing past trauma in our life. Um, uh, you'll notice I don't do that a lot, but when I do it, I try to do it with a lot. There's a lot of thought and sensitivity that goes into every episode. None of this is coming up the week of. You know, it's like we're talking about these things and thinking about how best to bring them here, sometimes for weeks or even months ahead of time. We've got some that we're looking at down the road in the same way. But I would say as well, Rick, the other thing that comes to mind that for me are the, the memorable episodes are any like this where I've got somebody else here with me. Um, having having somebody that I can actually banter with. I mean, I love the the chat as well, but for me, it would be kind of fun if there was a way to do this where almost like we could do Zoom where everybody was on the screen and we could all just get everybody's verbal <laughs> comment. You know? I don't know, that could get out of control real quick, but I, I, I like it. So we actually started, I think the very first one I did was last year when Nilu Nuri joined us and talked about the cookbook that she had produced uh, for her sons mm -hmm. during the pandemic and published. And since then, you know, and we've had people like Ann Davis East who comes back every couple of months and talks about books. And uh, and we've had some of these special guests, some of whom were not even people who I knew, but I just reached out to and said, would you be willing to do this? Um, but to me, that's fun. And I, you know, I don't do that every single week. Um, I, this hasn't necessarily been something where I've looked to transition into a talk show uh, other than you know, I'm talking, but I do like it when there's <laughs> someone else here. So I, so we are coming down to the, the end of time. We've run over by a couple of minutes, but Rick, uh, any, any last thoughts or comments that you have about movies or about coffee breaks or anything in life? Well, uh, I would like to, again, congratulate you and thank you and your crew for putting this on for 100 episodes. It's been very enjoyable. And also, I'd like to take a little bit to thank my assistant today, Carla, my wife of over 20 <laughs> years, and your sister who's kept That's the dogs right. at bay. You noticed you didn't hear any dog barking. <laughs> That's true. Our phone calls. So uh, everybody needs a little help sometime, and I appreciate that. And uh, along with your final message, I know you like to tell people to do good in the world. I'd like to mention that my, my motto has always been do unto others as you would have them do unto you because invariably they will. <laughs> That's exactly right, Rick. Well, listen, a couple of things as we get ready to sign off. Um, I, I want to mention next week's show. I've mentioned this a couple of times. Uh, next week, we're, our topic is going to be Who Tells Your Story? I have author Kathy Legro, who wrote a book a few years ago about a, a very fascinating book about her grandmother's life called The Waiting. Um, Kathy's been featured on the Today Show. Her book is available. We'll talk about that more awesome. next week. Talk about her book. But the topic is also going to be about how we find out and, and how do we capture the stories of our parents, our grandparents, those generations before us that so easily get lost and just become a moment in history that now we're having to research online if we if we don't have that opportunity to capture them. How can we capture them? And you know, what's the importance of that and how do we go about doing that? So who tells your story is going to be next week. Um, as we get ready, I, I do want to thank, thank you. First of all, Rick, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, this it was fun. A lot of fun. I knew it would be. I knew, I mean, any of the people who, um, who wanted to be in this drawing, I knew any of them would be a lot of fun, but I just okay. want to say this has been a kick. It's been an Great. absolute blast. Thank you so much. I do want to say thank you to Christopher to Carissa, to Shalan, to Carol, 
who uh, continually support uh, this show and, and help make sure that we get it on the air and that I do push the right buttons. And I, I, especially, I think more than anything else, I want to thank everybody who's on here. You know, it's this works because people come on and engage in the chat. And it's to me, it's not a big deal and a pat on my back that we've done 100 episodes. To me, it's extremely humbling that every single week there are people who take the time to come on here. You people take the time out of your morning on a Saturday to be here and to make this a conversation. So please know that for me, this is something that is very humbling. It's even very emotional. My kids will tell you there are times that I actually get kind of emotional thinking about the fact that people want to spend this time together with me, but with each other as well. You communicate with each other on here, which to me is part of the fun. So next week will be episode number 101, as in the Dalmatians that we all watched growing up. But, uh, you know, as Rick already alluded to, I just want to thank you all for being here. And I want to remind you that this is another week that you have ahead of you. Today's another day. This is another week. Find a way to make a difference in your world this week, would you please? Thank you for being here. God bless you. Have thank a great you. week. We'll thank see you, you next time. Bye-bye.